Hello and welcome to this CBT Nugget series on Help Desk Institute Support Center Analyst Certification. My name is Tim Warner and I'm grateful to be your instructor. Our agenda for this introductory nugget is as follows. I'm actually going to start with the second bullet point here. I think it's more relevant for our needs. I'm going to tell you about how I constructed this course, in particular, hopefully allaying any thoughts or concerns that you may have that this course is somehow out of sync with the HDI's published exam objectives for the Support Center Analyst Certification. After we talk about the training methodology behind this series, we'll then look at the certifications offered by the Help Desk Institute. We'll tour their website, we'll discuss the pros and cons of becoming a member of the HDI, and just in general, I hope to get you familiar with the inner workings of the HDI website. We'll certainly be turning to it a lot over the course of this training. We'll complete this introductory nugget by looking at the HDI SCA exam in general. How do you register for it? How much does it cost? What is the form factor for the exam, etc.? Now, about this course. I make it a rule whenever I develop a series for CBT Nuggets to make my first stop the vendor's own website so I can get a handle on exactly the content areas that they want us to know to pass their certification exam. Of course, I always take and pass the associated exams myself so I have a really accurate picture of that mapping between the vendor's stated objectives and the live exam. Now, we're in Nugget 1. As you see, we have 17 more Nuggets after this one, and I'm here to tell you if you take a look at the HDI SCA standards, as they're called, you'll find a one-to-one -one mapping between all of these Nuggets and the published standards. I want to be really careful about covering 100% of the content. This is going to help those of you that want to sit for the exam, of course, but also those of you who may be new, just entering the support industry, or maybe you're in tech technical support now and you're being asked to certify or just simply sharpen your skill set. So after our overview, we're going to look at leadership and ethics, communication and organizational skills, and then formally define the role of the support center analyst. We then turn to matters of policy and implementation of support services. So you see a trend here. There's a lot of just straight up soft skills, customer service type training that we need to do. We also need to consider the inner workings of the support center as a whole. By knowing the behind the scenes stuff, the HDI feels that we'll be much better SCAs. Service delivery methods, support types, quality assurance, again, all that deals with the behind the scenes mechanics of a functional support center. Then in the back side of the course, we dig into the IT infrastructure library, or ITIL, pretty seriously. We look at it in two and a half nuggets, actually. ITIL is covered much more in the HDI Desktop Support Technician, or DST, training. If you've already looked at that training series, don't worry, though, because I created this training, so I have an eye on minimizing overlap. Then we finish the course by getting back into typical bread-and-butter, day-to-day SCA skills, call management, documentation, problem-solving skills, incident escalation, and then finally status reporting. All in all, this is a really nice collection of soft skills. You'll notice that the HDI's certification, and this holds true for desk desktop support as well is almost entirely on the soft skill side of the picture. That is, we're not dealing with vendor hardware or vendor software and specifics. We're dealing with the business skills that you need to do a great job as a support center analyst. About HDI certification. First of all, HDI stands for the Help Desk Institute, if you didn't already know that. Their parent company is called Think Services, and Think actually has quite a few programs besides just the Help Desk wing. We'll take a look at their website momentarily. If you look at the second bullet point, this is a URL that you should always have in the forefront of your mind as aspiring or current support center analysts, and this is the HDI program's homepage. And some folks who aren't aware that HDI HDI is owned by Think Services. Kind of wonder what's up with Think in front of HDI. Now you know. <laughs> I'm going to take you to the site momentarily, so hang on to your hats about that. 
Now, if you're brand new to this skill set, you might be wondering what are the differences specifically between the support center analyst and the desktop support technician? Well, it kind of depends on who you ask. The good news about the HDI skill sets, in my experience, in my opinion, is that if they do anything, they give us IT professionals and support professionals a common vocabulary, a common framework from which to work. And we'll see that according to the HDI, the support center analyst is typically the customer or user's first point of contact. And dollars to donuts, this is either going to be through a telephone contact or an email contact. Typically, we'll also see that the chain of custody for an incoming problem or incident resides with the SCA, such that even if you escalate an issue to a desktop support technician, you are still, under most circumstances, the responsible party for following up and closing the issue. By contrast, the desktop support technician could be looked at in the HDI schema as kind of a level two or second level support, whereas SCA does just general troubleshooting, the basic essentially. If the problem or issue scope is beyond the SCA's skill set or what's defined in the service level agreement and escalation rules for the support center, then the SCA will typically elevate the issue to a desktop support technician who will attempt some kind of on-site support. Now, if you're helping internal users in your organization, then the DST would be typically dispatched to that user's desk. Otherwise, in a customer situation, perhaps the DST will establish some sort of remote desktop or remote connection methodology in order to solve the problem. So I hope you understand the distinction. There's certainly a lot of overlap between these two skill sets, but there is in fact a distinction. You could kind of look at SCA as an entry-level help desk skill set and desktop support technician the next frontier or the next vanguard of that skill set. Over on the right, you see I've stacked up a bunch of logos. This is the full catalog of Help Desk Institute certifications. Of course, we are right here, the Support Center Analyst title. I think I mentioned before I've created the HDI Desktop Support Technician title for CBT Nuggets, and I would strongly encourage you to take a look at it, especially if you have a streaming subscription and you have access to all of our products at CBT Nuggets. You'll note that there's a general customer service representative credential, and then there are several targeted support center credentials that are for management. Support center director, support center manager, support center team lead, and then we finish with... I don't know why this graphic is duplicated three times and this one twice. You're not seeing double or triple respectively, I promise you. <laughs> but these, this bottom credential, knowledge-centered support principles, this deals with a problem-solving methodology called, you guessed it, KCS, or knowledge-centered support. We'll talk about that later in the training. Whether you're new to IT or you've been around a while, you're probably familiar with IT certification in general and its importance. Now more than ever in 2010, as of this recording, IT certification is almost essential for folks who are currently out in the job market and want to get a leg up on their next position. To that end, I wanted to give you a heads up on some related certifications. Now the first of these three categories, ITIL, again, is more of a vendor neutral approach. We're going to be dealing with ITIL in much greater detail later in the course. Consequently, I'm going to bypass this one for now. But Microsoft and CompTIA are both vendors who offer certifications that, while in Microsoft's case is vendor specific and CompTIA's is vendor neutral, both of these sets of credentials share the commonality that they are, in fact, hard tech skill credentials. So on one hand, we have the HDI and the soft skills. On the other hand, you might want to consider earning a title from, say, Microsoft, who has a suite of certifications devoted specifically to the desktop support technician role. If you're looking for a Microsoft DST credential for Windows XP, which is probably not the best idea given the retirement of Windows XP, Microsoft has the Microsoft Certified Desktop Support Technician, or MCDST, title. Nowadays, though, in the land of Windows Vista and Windows 7 support, we have the Microsoft Certified IT Professional, or MCITP. There are a couple different titles specifically for desktop support technicians or application 
administrators. CompTIA is a vendor-neutral consortium of technology vendors, of IT pros, academic institutions, etc., who publish vendor-neutral certifications in the IT space. The two main ones that you may want to take a look at if you are interested in pursuing a more technical title in addition to HDI SCA are A+, which is the Computer Hardware Technician and Software Troubleshooting Credential, and Network+, Plus, which is an entry-level title for computer network support. At this time, I think it's germane to show you the HDI's website. Their URL, again, is thinkhdi.com. Now, now, there's good news and neutral news with their website. The good news is that it's at least halfway functional if you're not a member of the HDI. So there's still quite a bit of free material that the Help Desk Institute hands out if you're not a member. The neutral news is the vast majority of their resources are visible only to Help Desk Institute members. As a matter of fact, remember earlier I talked about the HDI certification standards? Well, if I open the eStore link, I'll Already, if you're thinking e-store, you're probably thinking I'm going to lay out some cashola here. Well, you're right. The HDI certification standards are the detailed descriptions of the skill sets in each one of their titles. Now, if you're a member, notice that the total is zero. You can download every single one of these. They're high-resolution PDF files. If you're not a member, it's going to cost you $30 to get a detailed picture of what the certification has to offer. Now, if you want to email me, we can talk offline about the our opinions on the pros and cons of being so selective about sharing their information here, but that's another story for another day. You just need to know, if I come back to the home page, that you really will want to join the HDI, not only actually to gain access to their site, which is a really robust site, and once you're a member, as you see, I'm logged in and I've joined at the platinum level, there's a lot to learn in the HDI knowledge library. And as I said, many times during the course of this training, we're going to be revisiting resources Sources from the HDI site. Now let me open the Join HDI menu. We'll come to Membership Levels and just take a quick look at this at a glance chart. You notice that we have Bronze all the way up to Platinum. Obviously Bronze is the least expensive way to join. Let's quickly jump down to there. Bronze is 75 bucks. Silver 150, Gold, Platinum, and Platinum Plus is 1500 bucks. Hmm. Well, what do you get if you come in at a higher level? Now everybody, even Bronze, gets an introduction to their local Help Desk Institute or HDI chapter. Now, there's lots and lots of these chapters through just about all major cities in the U.S. It's not globally localized yet, unfortunately. As it happens, my city of residence, which is Nashville, Tennessee, does have a local chapter of HDI. If you're interested in hitting it up, it's hdimusiccity.com. And that actually brings up, really, beyond the knowledge base aspect of the HDI website, the other benefit that I've seen and that I offer to you of joining the HDI is industry networking. I can't tell you almost how many really great jobs I've had in the past, consulting part-time and even full-time, that were not advertised in the newspaper but came through industry contacts. So keep that in mind. By joining the HDI, you're linking up with other support center professionals from all over the United States. All right. And by the way, I'm not being in any way, shape, or form compensated by the HDI to tell you all this. I'm offering it simply as your colleague and as an instructor. All right, so you see the join links. That's all well and good. Let's come back to the whiteboard and continue. I'd like to tell you about the HDI SCA exam in particular. You'll note that the cost of the exam is a little bit more than, for instance, a Microsoft exam, which goes for $125 USD, but it's cheaper than some CompTIA credentials, actually cheaper than just about all of theirs. The a computer repair credential, for instance, requires a couple exams whose combined total, once it's all said and done, is almost 500 bucks USD. So as far as certification exam costs go, the HDI SCA is just slightly higher than average in my experience. Now what's quite a bit different actually about this exam compared to say Microsoft, Cisco, CompTIA, even ITIL, is that not so 
so much the format, we have 65 multiple choice questions to be answered in 75 minutes with an 80% pass score. That's fine. But what's interesting is that you take this exam on your own using the honor system. The only other vendor I've had experience with that offers a certification exam online, kind of on demand, you can take this exam as soon as you pay for it, and it's supposed to be closed book, and it is closed book as far as we're concerned, but you're not actually having to register with, say, Pearson View or Prometric and go to a physical testing center where there are cameras on you and all that. This is really an honor-based credential. That having been said, in my experience, HDI exams are very fair. They don't have the reputation that, say, a Microsoft exam does, at least the older ones, say, Windows Server 2003 support, Windows XP support with super, super tricky questions. It's pretty straightforward. The bottom line is, if you know the material, then you should pass the exam with flying colors. Well, I think we've covered everything we need to to get started, so I hope you're as excited as I am, and put on those thinking caps, and let's get our learning on. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.